Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American action thriller film called Run, Hide, Fight. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Zoe Hall is a senior in high school. After the recent death of her cancerous mother, Zoe has completely pulled out of life. One morning, she and her father Todd are on a hunting mission. He aims at a buck that doesn't die instantly after getting shot. The father and daughter have two options, either wait and let the animal die a painful death or mercy kill it. As Todd tries explaining what might be a better option, Zoe picks up a rock and slams it into the buck's head. Todd is left shocked at the lack of sympathy she feels for the animal. He knows her strange behavior is rooted in the trauma caused by her mother's death. Later, during breakfast, Zoe hallucinates talking to her mother, as she frequently does. She knows it sounds crazy and hasn't told anyone yet, but talking to her is the only thing that gives Zoe comfort in life. Her best friend Lewis comes to pick her up for school. On their way, they are troubled by a vehicle full of douchebags from their school who send their car off the road. While waiting for it to start, Zoe notices one of her classmates, named Chris, placing an object in the middle of the field. She thinks it is weird, but it is normal for someone like Chris, who is considered an outcast. Today is the senior prank day at school. The senior students play several silly tricks on teachers, which both Zoe and Lewis dread. In class, Zoe's chemistry teacher, Mrs. Jane, notices her obvious change in behavior after her mother's unfortunate death. She tries talking to her about it, but is instantly dismissed. Following that, Zoe finds a prom proposal from Lewis inside her locker. She never wanted to go to the prom and is dreading that she will have to reject him. They meet in the cafeteria at lunch, but she tries avoiding the subject. Lewis brings it up and clarifies that he is asking her as a friend because he doesn't want them to be home when the rest of the school is having fun. Zoe is clearly upset and excuses herself to go to the bathroom. At the same time, several unharmful explosions are taking place throughout the city. The police, paramedics, and firemen are busy trying to control the situation. It is clear that the explosions are intentional. When Zoe walks into the bathroom, she sees a bully, Anna, hiding something above a vent. After the bully leaves, she checks the vent but finds nothing. Back in the cafeteria, a van suddenly drives in through the glass door and hits a guy. The guy Zoe had seen earlier that morning, named Chris, steps out of the vehicle and shoots the injured man dead. He is joined by a group of three, Anna from the bathroom earlier, who is also Chris's sister, the school's loser, Kip, and the leader of the gang, Tristan. They are the ones who planted explosives all around the town just to distract the police and are here to shoot up the place. They kill a few people right away to assert their dominance and force the others to keep quiet. Zoe is about to walk out of the bathroom when one of the injured girls barges in and begs for help. Zoe panics but can do nothing for her before she passes away. She realizes something is extremely wrong and carefully steps out to listen to the shooter's conversation. The leader, Tristan, tells the students that they are now hostages who will have to obey all of his orders. He spots a guy in the crowd who used to bully him in the hallways every day. Chris shoots the guy dead without the leader's permission. Although Tristan wanted to do the same, he tells Chris to be calm and only use the gun when permitted. Kip walks to the bathroom to check if everyone is out. Zoe senses this and quickly climbs up the vent before getting caught. She then crawls through it, hoping to reach the other exit. Meanwhile, Tristan asks a girl to pull her phone out and call someone she loves. She calls her mother, explains the situation, and tells her mother that she loves her. The mother on the other end promises to call the police immediately. After the call, Tristan tells everyone the police have been informed so they can skip trying to secretly call them now. He even allows them to call their parents one last time before their deaths. The group does as told and sends a tearful goodbye to their loved ones in case they don't return home today. When Zoe is over the kitchen, the vent breaks and she falls to the floor. The noise invites Chris in who looks for the intruder. The kitchen lady comes outside to save a hiding Zoe and takes a bullet for her. Zoe is left shocked at her limp self lying on the floor, but she composes herself quickly. Tristan then calls the school's receptionist and tells her about the dead students. She doesn't believe him but informs the security guard and the principal immediately. 
Somewhere else, Zoe manages to step out of the school through the back door in the kitchen. She meets a group of classmates and informs them of what is happening inside. Following the call, Tristan asks all hostages to start a live stream on any platform they wish to. He wants to make a statement and let the entire world know what he is doing. The stream starts, and he asks all the platforms to cooperate because if they ban the streams, more people will die. As he introduces himself to the world, the principal barges in with the security guard. Instead of being scared, Tristan welcomes them in and inquires if they know why he is doing all of this. The principal reveals that Tristan was called to his office twice last week because of his failing grades and bad behavior. The principal called him a worthless man who will never amount to anything. But the shootout is not about just a few meetings for Tristan. He is a well-spoken and well-educated man who has been beaten and bullied by society. The principal tries calming him down but is shot dead in the process. The security guard, on the other hand, is allowed to escape. Lewis turns out to have the most live viewers among the hostages. Hence, Tristan makes him the primary cameraman and brings him to the front. Meanwhile, Zoe goes to every individual classroom to alert them of the situation. While some teachers chase her away, thinking it is just a prank, others believe her. Still, it will take a lot of time to inform them one by one. Zoe rings the fire alarm so everyone would get out on their own. However, Anna, who is in the electrical room, kills a guard and destroys all the switches. This turns the alarm off, and everyone who had come out of their classroom goes back inside. The receptionist announces from the speakers that the school is in lockdown and asks the students to stay put. Just then, the first batch of policemen arrive. By now, some channels have started to pick up the news, but Tristan wants them to broadcast the live stream on national television. When Zoe finally reaches the receptionist's desk, a bag of explosives goes off, killing everyone but her. The group had already planned the attack so the students won't be notified, but the explosion was a bit late. Zoe hallucinates her mother talking to her, telling her that the situation is absurd. Suddenly, Anna comes into her view, so she pretends to be dead. After she walks away, Zoe bangs on a classroom door to continue alerting people. However, Anna hears her and comes looking for the noise. Zoe tries to escape, but her leg is shot in the process. The girls end up in the teacher's room, which is filled with balloons that the students arranged as a prank. Zoe hides inside the room and attacks when Anna is vulnerable. After a little bit of a struggle, she manages to shoot her dad. The police find out about Tristan's family background and address. A policeman goes to his home, only to find his mother lying dead on the sofa. She seems to have been there for a few days now. It is evident that Tristan killed her. Meanwhile, in school, Tristan puts Chris in charge and makes his way to a Spanish class. The teacher asks him to stop, but he, in turn, makes her take her top off. She has to reluctantly stand in front of the camera as the thousands of people in the live stream watch her. Then, Todd hears the news about the shooting and rushes to the school in his truck. By now, several parents, police, and reports have gathered outside. Chris starts hearing voices in his head, which is the main reason why he joined Tristan in the mission. The voices make him fire at the police outside. The noise attracts Tristan's attention, and he returns to the cafeteria, taking the Spanish teacher and her students with him. Moments later, Kip bumps into Zoe and follows her while firing at her. They end up in a slippery hallway where Zoe attacks him with a fire extinguisher and knocks him out. She then brings him to the auditorium and handcuffs him to a seat. Her mother appears yet again and talks about how Zoe is holding her back from being fully dead because she cannot let go of her. When Kip wakes up, he sees her talking to herself and instantly assumes she is like him. Zoe inquires why he got involved in the shooting. It turns out that he was stripped naked in front of the assembly in middle school. Ever since, people have giggled behind his back. Zoe asks if he ever thought that the people giggling were just happy. She belittles him for killing those who didn't have anything to do with the bullying. She also mentions that more people are going to talk about the assembly incident when they find out he is involved in the shooting. The comment seems to trigger his trauma and makes him wake up from all the propaganda Tristan has fed him. Zoe comes outside to retrieve Kip's gun and finds Mrs. Jane escorting her class outside. The teacher sees the gun and assumes Zoe is also a shooter, but she is quick to explain otherwise. She helps them out but refuses to go out herself until she helps the other students. Mrs. Jane also joins her before they make their way to the library. A rescued student tells Todd that his daughter helped them and stayed in the school to help the others. The news is bittersweet for a father. 
Tristan quickly catches on that someone is helping the students escape. He calls Anna's number and demands to talk to the person behind all of this. Zoe bravely tells him that she killed Anna. Tristan asks her to come to the cafeteria in five minutes before he starts murdering the hostages. To let her know that he is being serious, he shoots a random girl. Todd watches this on the live stream and brings his hunting rifle out, deciding to save his daughter on his own. Inside, Zoe goes to Kip, who is now drowning in regret. This makes it easier for her to convince him to change sides. She puts all of her trust in him and hands him the gun before making her way to the cafeteria. Tristan is surprised to see that Zoe is the one causing trouble for him, as he remembers seeing her in the hallways a few times. She confidently stands in front and challenges him. Just then, Kip arrives in the back to protect her. Tristan laughs, knowing that Kip was not good enough to be involved in the first place. A shootout ensues, in which Chris kills Kip. Zoe and Lewis take the opportunity to run away while being followed by Chris. After running for a while, Lewis reveals that he was shot. Zoe takes him to an office and lays him down on the sofa before kissing him. She promises to go to prom together and runs outside, trying to divert Chris towards her. They end up in the chemistry lab, where Zoe turns the gas on and gives rise to a minor explosion. The flames are enough to catch Todd's attention, who is now in the woods behind the school. He has snuck in to save his daughter. Eventually, Chris finds Zoe and is about to kill her, but seconds before, Todd shoots him dead. The police find him right after and arrest him, but he is relieved to have saved his daughter. Tristan calls Chris on the phone, but Zoe picks up. By her side is her mother, who encourages her to fight harder. Zoe sends Tristan a picture of Chris's dead body and asks him what he thinks of it. Tristan sees his entire plan failing now that he is alone. As a last resort, he enters the van and triggers an explosive. On the call, Zoe tells him that all of his work was a waste. He wanted to prove a point to people, but instead of him, the public will remember her. Tristan realizes it is true and loses his mind. He chooses a random guy from the hostages and takes him to the rooftop, leaving the others alone. Zoe returns to the cafeteria, where she sees the explosive only has 40 seconds to go off. She makes the hostages run away and quickly gets the van outside. Fortunately, the explosion that follows doesn't hurt anyone. She then returns to the hallways, where a SWAT officer holds her down. At that moment, Zoe's mother wishes her farewell and goes away, having finally been freed from Zoe's heart. In the following scene, the sheriff meets Zoe and shakes her hand, praising her bravery. He informs her that Tristan was burned to a crisp in an explosion. After a brief chat, she goes to meet her father, who has been arrested in a police car. He tells her how proud he is. Lewis is also being escorted into an ambulance and is out of a critical state. But then, Zoe notices someone suspicious walking out of the school. She retrieves her father's rifle and follows the man. The person digs up some money from the side of a creek. Zoe aims the rifle at him, realizing that it is Tristan who probably faked his death to get away. She shoots him in the chest before approaching him. He hasn't died yet, just like the buck at the beginning of the film. But unlike the buck, he doesn't deserve her mercy, so she leaves him to die a painful death. In the last scene, we see her returning to the school grounds and informing the sheriff of what happened. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.